The Irishman is a 2019 movie about an Irish-American mafia hitman and union official Frank the Irishman Sheeran. In the beginning of the movie, we see the aging Frank Sheeran himself, who tells his life story from his own perspective. He tells us how he began to work as a house painter, or a contract killer to be more exact, for the Buffalino crime family. The movie does a great job of presenting the life story of a cold-blooded murderer in an extremely intimate way. We, the viewer, enter Sheeran's elderly care home to hear a confession from the evil person himself. But what exactly makes the Irishman so evil? In his 1967 book, The Symbolism of Evil, French philosopher Paul Ricoeur explores the mythical symbolism of evil. Ricoeur claims that myths seek to account for the crisis in the bond between the man and the sacred. We can see that the Irishman is a kind of a myth. First person narration by the Irishman gives us a consolidated story. There's a clear beginning where Shira is still young and then the end where he is about to die after his confession. Most importantly, the Irishman presents us with a crisis. The bond between a man and the sacred, the pure good, is in crisis. The Irishman is a narrated myth about a person who is confessing his crisis. The crisis of moving away from the sacred. Paul Ricoeur claims that myths about evil are different from symbols about evil and that myths are narrations given in time and space, like the Irishman's confession, whereas symbols are demythologized myths, which represent a culturally significant manifestation of evil. For example, Ricoeur claims that the story about Adam and Eve's expulsion from paradise is a myth, whereas exile is a standalone symbol, which represents this particular myth. In the case of the Irishman, the story is filled with clear symbols of evil, which generate the overall tension between evil and the sacred. Paul Ricoeur distinguishes three types of symbols of evil. The first type is defilement, uh, which Ricoeur defines as an unclean contact caused by the material environment. That is to say, defilement is a stain that arouses terror in the person's eyes. We can see a clear example of defilement in the Irishman's inability to understand why would soldiers during the war dig their own graves. Let's see the movie. It's crazy, but I never understood how they would just keep digging their own graves, you know. I mean, stop! Ross! I mean, maybe they thought if they did a good job, the guy with the gun would change his mind. We can consider this to be a symbol of defilement because the soldiers are doing something that is absolutely irrational. It feels as though the world has gone mad, the ethical rules are stained by the evil irrationality of war. The second type of symbol of evil, according to Recur, is sin. The main category here is the relationship with God. In other words, sin always occurs before God. Paul Ricoeur writes, Sin is not a transgression of an abstract rule, but a violation of a personal bond. Therefore, the deeper the relationship is with the spiritual force, the deeper the meaning of sin will be. In the case of the Irishman, the most significant sin in the movie is the murder of Jimmy Hoffa. We, the viewer, can see clearly that Hoffa is a particularly important person for Sheeran. In addition, Jimmy Hoffa is also a very important person for Sheeran's daughter. By killing Hoffa, Sheeran breaks the personal bond with Hoffa, Hoffa's family, and his own daughter. Even though Sheeran is indeed a cold-blooded murderer, the guy painted houses for a living, he nevertheless has the capacity to regret violating the bond with people who are closest to him. We know that after killing Hoffa, Sheeran talked to Hoffa's wife, tried to console her, and lied about not knowing what happened to him. This action symbolizes the bond that is violated, crushed. Sheeran is, for this reason, ashamed of it. He deeply regrets his sin. What kind of a man makes a phone call like that? What do you mean, what, what, what phone call? The last symbol of evil, according to Paul Ricoeur, is guilt. This is quite obvious. Guilt is internalization and personalization of sin. Ricoeur writes, To be guilty is only to be ready to undergo the chastisement and to make oneself the subject of chastisement. 
guilt should therefore be interpreted as a very personal emotion. A guilty person is afraid of a deadly punishment for the evil use of liberty. Guilt is different from the confession of sin because one has to live privately with his own sense of guilt. In the movie, the symbol of guilt manifests in Sheeran's inability to come to terms with his own death, his own finitude. He confesses his sins to the priest, he shares his story with the investigators, he tries to apologize to his daughters for mistreating them, but the consequences of his crimes are still with him. The punishment for the evil use of his liberty is not death. The punishment is the inability to die without guilt, that is, to die in peace. The last shot of the movie shows a person who is stuck in his own sense of guilt. Guilt, unlike sin, is extremely personal. It can no longer be shared with anyone. In this book, Paul Ricoeur shows us that symbols of evil have an origin in the ancient Judeo-Christian and Greek literature. These ancient stories make up the bedrock of our understanding of good and bad. When we say that a person or an action is evil, we inevitably refer to the canon, the history of thought that describes in detail the nature of evil. As Paul Ricoeur says, the symbol gives rise to thoughts, which means that our stories never just hang in a cultural vacuum. They refer to our history. For this reason, we should be more attentive to the symbols that are being used today in pop culture and how they refer to our shared historical enigmas. This would make us better interpreters. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.